In the previous video, we've derived the kramers kronig dispersion relationships. And what we're going to do now is we're going to apply them to the domain of photonics. So for that, we need to make a certain choice of our function f of z. And for f of z, we will be making the following choice. We will be putting f of z equal to the susceptibility in the frequency domain. So chi is a function of omega. And remember, this is the refractive index squared as a function of omega minus one. So just a brief reminder about this uh, susceptibility here. If you have a certain material with electrons and you excite that material with an electric field with a certain frequency omega, so we're working in the frequency domain here, what will happen is that the electrons will follow that electric field, the oscillation of the electric field, and that will result in a certain macroscopic polarization of the material, P, as a function of omega. And the relationship between these two in the linear case is given by epsilon zero, so the vacuum uh, permittivity, um, times this chi of omega. So this is what the susceptibility means. It's the material response in terms of polarization when you excite it, excite it with an electric uh, field. Now this seems at first like a rather odd choice. So why do we have the refractive index squared minus one? But actually, there is a very good mathematical reason why we use this particular function. So pause the video and see if you can identify why we use this particular form of f of z in order to be able to apply the kramers kronig dispersion relationships. Remember, the kramers kronig dispersion relationships, they don't just hold for any odd function f of z. No, there is a certain condition that needs to be fulfilled, namely in the limits of z going towards infinity, our function f of z should vanish. Now, in our particular case, this means, okay, z going towards infinity means omega going towards infinity. So what happens with our material for infinitely high frequencies of the exciting electric field? So say you gradually increase the frequency of the electric field, then your electrons will keep moving faster and faster and faster until at a certain point, the field oscillates so rapidly that the electrons can no longer follow. And even in the limit of infinitely high frequencies, the electrons will just stay put and not move at all. So this means that at that point in time, there's no longer any interaction between the exciting electric field and the material. It basically means for all intents and purposes that the material is no longer there because it doesn't interact. So it behaves like vacuum. So in the limits of infinitely high frequencies, our uh, refractive index approaches unity. And this then means that our susceptibility approaches zero. And this is why we use the susceptibility here because that's a function that obeys this particular condition, namely that it vanishes for infinitely high uh, frequencies, for infinitely high values of the complex variable in our case. So now the only thing we're going to do is just some small notational changes. So there's a x naught in the kramers kronig dispersion relationships. We're going to replace that by omega, the frequency that we're interested in. And then the integration variable x, we're going to call that omega prime. And then of course, our arbitrary function now is the susceptibility. And then it's just a matter of making these substitutions. And then we can say that the real parts of the susceptibility as a function of frequency is equal to one over pi, the principal value integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, the imaginary parts of the susceptibility, omega prime here, and then omega prime minus omega, the omega prime, and then a very similar relationships, relationship with the imaginary part here. So we have minus one over pi, the principal value integral minus infinity to plus infinity. In this case, it's an integral over the real parts of the susceptibility, divided again by omega prime minus omega d omega prime. So these are the kramers kronig relationships as applied to photonics for this particular choice of our function f of z. But that's not the only possible choice. Actually, pause the video and try if you can come up with a different function f of z, one that will give us some information 
not uh, related to omega squared, not related to the refractive index squared, but rather directly related to the refractive index. So pause the video and see if you can come up with an alternative function f of z here. Well, it's not so difficult. If we have a function uh, f of z, which will now be, uh, let's call this the difference in the refractive index as a function of omega. And by difference, we mean the refractive index at omega minus the refractive index at omega um, equal infinity. And we know that this is one. Then we have another valid function. Because again, uh, in the limits of omega going towards infinity, this will also obviously re reduce to 1, and therefore this will, uh, will be 0. So rather than having n squared minus 1, we just have n minus 1, and that's just as valid a function in order to apply the Kramers-Kronig uh, dispersion relationships. So in these equations up here, you can also replace chi by delta omega, and then also have valid uh, relationships. Okay, um, let's interpret this a little bit. What does this mean? So obviously the refractive index in general has a real part and an, uh, an imaginary part. So we have the real part of the refractive index that tells you something about the evolution of the, the, the phase if you propagate through the material. And then the imaginary part of the refractive index that tells you something about the loss of the material, right? the, the, the absorption. And what Kramers Kronig tells us is that these two are related. So if you know one as a function of frequency, you automatically can calculate the other one. So that gives us a handy experimental trick if you want to, for example, figure out what the refractive index, what the real part of the refractive index of a certain material is. Well, what you do, you just take your material, you measure the loss uh, as a function of frequency, which is typically a little bit easier. You do that for a large number of frequencies, such that you can numerically evaluate that integral here, and then you can use Kramers Kronig to calculate the real parts of the refractive index. So this is something that people uh, sometimes do in, uh, in experiments. And then before we close this video, a final piece of wisdom I want to impart here is that there's also another um, important concept that is behind these Kramers Kronig dispersion relationships. And that is that you can show, and that's what has been done in the, the theorem by, by Titchmarch, is that this concept of kramers kronig is actually intimately related to causality. So if you have a causal system, the kramers kronig relationships will, uh, will hold. And causality, of course, means that if you have a certain cause that causes a certain effect, that the effect obviously should come after the stimulus, after the cause. So kramers kronig is intimately related to causality, which is another very important physical concept.